Hey everyone, it's Hayden here, back with another 11 plus video, and today we're looking at some verbal reasoning, and if you stick around till the end, you will become a pro at this question type, I promise you that. So let's dive in, explain the instructions, and see what's going on here. So this is a verbal reasoning question where you are shown two pairs of words, and you have to pick one of the five answer words which goes, that's, that's how vague the language is, that goes best with both brackets of words, and that's all you're told. Now, what ends up happening the majority of the time in these questions is the pairs of words will be maybe synonyms of each other, so they just mean the same thing, but each pair will be different. They'll have different meanings. For example, look at this one, solid and firm. That, that means like hard, right? Something, something hard or tough. Whereas difficult and tough, like I've used the same word there, difficult and tough means tricky, right? So even looking at these answers, we've got the, the idea that tricky or hard might mean this one right here, or tricky might mean this one right here. But what we've got to do is find the one word of the five options that is a homophone, which means it has more than one meaning, and therefore can mean both of these groups of words, or go with both of these groups of words. As you'll see later in the video, sometimes it's not actually a homophone, it is a category, but we'll get to that, stick around. So this is a nice easy one, I think, because we think about it, solid, firm, the only thing that really goes with solid and firm is hard, and if you think about the word hard, it does have two meanings, right? It both means something solid, so if I was knocking on a door, so it has a very hard uh, surface, but it also means when something's difficult. I might say this test is really hard or this question's really hard. So nice easy one to get us started with. We can see that C is the answer because it goes with both pairs of words. So now we understand the rules, let's just slowly increase that difficulty. So here's the next one. This time I'm gonna get you to pause it. I want you to read the words this time and think, which of the five answers could you justify as going equally well with both pairs of words? Well, I'm gonna introduce you now to a second strategy that I really like to do, and it's something you won't need to do in the test when you're at that point, but as you're learning, it can be a really good way of supporting your thinking, right? So what I like to do is look at the pair of words and I like to match up with lines any words that I think go with that group. So festival and carnival. Okay, they're not quite synonyms, are they? But they're very similar things. They're both events. So I think this kind of goes quite well with them. They're both events. Um, you could say they're both shows, you know, a carnival is a type of show, a festival is normally, a sh there's normally a show going on at a festival. You could also say a fair, like a, a summer fair, right? A summer fair um, is like is like a carnival, like a festival where everyone gets together and maybe you buy and sell things and there's a, there's a band performing a show at the other end. They're all really similar. Whereas light and unbiased, I don't really think go with this. Now my second group of words is reasonable and just, to be reasonable, to be just means to be unbiased, okay? If you're in a, in a courtroom, you're hopefully being very unbiased, you're there to represent the law, you're being reasonable, you're showing justice, which, which is where just comes from. And another word for that is, of course, to be fair. If you're being reasonable, you're being fair. Your teacher is hopefully a very reasonable person. They're fair, they might be firm, but they're fair. Now, looking at our lines, only one of these words went to both pairs, which is kind of what we're you know doing in our heads, which was E. Fair. fair can mean uh, like a summer fair, like a carnival or a festival where you're celebrating things, but fair can also mean to be reasonable and just. So fair is our answer. Now, if you practice with the lines like this a few times, you'll realize that actually that's all you're doing in your head and you'll get quicker and quicker and quicker because that's what this is all about. We practice until we get quicker and become more familiar with the questions. Now, parents, there's a lot of 11 plus resources out there. We know that. There's tons. You can go on the internet, you can search 11 plus resources, you'll find a million different pages. But nobody has a premium library of hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of lesson videos that we've built over many years, like me and Dylan at Top Dog Tutoring. So if you head to our website, you'll see that the questions from this video came from one of our worksheets, which you can see right here on the screen in our verbal reasoning section, spring week two. And that comes with answers, as does every single lesson we have on there, and even a video walkthrough of the answers so that your, your child is never left thinking, I'm just not sure how, why the answer is correct or how they got to that solution. All you have to do, go make a free account. You can access some of our resources straight away for free. Use the QR code above here if you're on your phone or you can just use the link in the description, make an account. And if you like the premium resources, maybe you can upgrade and unlock the whole library for year four, maybe for year five, and maybe even year six if they're moving on to their SATs and getting secondary ready. Anyway, I'll leave that with you. So back to the video, slightly harder once again. Now, take your time, have a go at this one, come back, pause the video and come back to, for, for a little discussion on how we can best solve this. All 
All right, so let's have a look. We've got split and we could either read this as separate or separate, right? Depends on if you're thinking about it as a verb or noun. And then we've got tree and wood. Now, this is our first example here, I think, a really good example of a proper category. Tree and wood are not synonyms, are they? Tree does not mean wood. Wood does not mean tree, but they're clearly linked. They're in the category of, I guess, trees, right? You, you see a tree, you think, what's it made of? It's, it's made of wood, right? So what other words might go well with tree and wood? Well, obviously bark, because you'll find the bark on the tree. A leaf, that goes well with trees and wood. A branch, you've got quite a few there. Slice and section, I wouldn't say a particularly tree -y. I've made that word up, tree -y. Um, Let's go back to the first pair. We've got split and separate. I guess slice is kind of the same as that one, right? Because you're splitting something up, you're slicing it. A section, I guess, is kind of the same as well, right? Two sections, you split them apart. It's all about like that splitting motion, isn't it? And also, if we think about it, because none of them are going to two yet, it must be C, branch. That's my only word that I could also say means to split or to separate. If I said go and branch off into groups, what that means is split yourselves up. You know, you think about a tree branch. This is gonna be the worst tree you've ever seen in your life, guys. We've got lots of branches. Well, some branches separate like this, right? And just the branches themselves, they all go in separate directions. So when we when we say to someone, or oh, let's, you know, let's branch off, what we're saying is let's split up, okay? So that is why C is the best answer. Branch is a homophone, and it goes equally well with our homophones on the left and our category of tree and wood on the right. We're getting there. We're getting the hang of this. Let's do another one. And then I think I'll leave you to have a go at answering one in the comments section below. So here we go. Last one. I'll let you read this one and uh, yeah, see if you can get this one. Pretty tricky. So sometimes the challenge comes from vocabulary and you need to be thinking to yourself, am I held back by not understanding the question? Or is it the vocabulary? If it's the vocabulary, then you know what you do. You know that's the thing you need to go and practice, try and enrich your vocabulary. Maybe you can just try to read a few more books, a bit more challenging books, or get some vocabulary cards or whatever it is. So looking at this, we've got beckon and gesture. That might be where you get stuck, okay? To beckon is to do something, or to gesture is to do something with your hands to kind of signify some sort of action. Like you want something. You might, I might gesture to you to be like, bye, by doing this, okay? And ride and surf is more like a category. So we've got homophones on the left and category on the right again, a bit like the last question. What does ride and surf make me think of? Well, that makes me think of water. Um, it makes me think of gush, like gushing water. That's like, like a huge amount of water. It makes me think of wave. It makes me think of board. In fact, most of these words go really well with ride and surf. Now, beckon and gesture makes me think of hand because you quite often gesture or beckon with your hand. Like you do this, like it means like come over here. I'm, I'm beckoning over. Um, but what else goes with it? Well, the only other word that goes well with beckon and gesture is wave, right? Because waving at someone is a type of beckon or a type of gesture, like, hello, I'm waving at you with my hands. So we've revealed the answer, haven't we? Because wave is a homophone. Wave can both mean to beckon or to gesture as a type of beckon or a gesture. And it can, and it also goes really well with the category of riding and surfing. You might ride the wave or surf the wave. Okay, so there's our answer. We've had a homophone and a bit of more of a category once again, but always the answer is a homophone. It has to have two meanings, otherwise it simply can't go with both sets of brackets. And that's what you always need to be thinking to yourself. Open your mind to what words might mean, because some words have lots of meanings, some words only have one meaning. So here's a question for you guys. Leave a comment down below. Make sure, of course, before you do that, you subscribe. You like this video, you share it with at least 4,000 other people so that we can spread the 11 plus preparation love. And of course, then leave your comment. What do you think the answer is to this question? You've got freckle and spot on the left. You've got shrew and vol. Are you caught out by the vocabulary? Do you need to look up those words? Maybe on the right hand side. And you've got five options here to choose from. Guys, I'm gonna leave it in your capable hands to leave that comment down below. And I look forward to seeing you in the next video. Bye-bye.